guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, down here in the garage, just working away on the dart. I'm lining up my next big project. Figured I'd flick the camera on and kind of show you guys what I'm looking at because today I'm kind of looking at something that's widely debated on the internet. And if you don't do like quite a bit of research, it's pretty tricky to figure out exactly what everybody's talking about, even though most of the time it seems like everybody's talking about the same thing, but they're not quite putting it in layman's terms. Um, if you saw my last video in the cruise, uh, if you look in the garage to the right, as I'm pulling the car out, you'll actually see a Dana rear end, and that's what I'm lining up to buy. I'm gonna get a full S60 Strange Dana 60 rear end for the car, more of a drag race setup. Uh, you'll see that later on. I'll get more into the details about what that's gonna be, but today we're gonna be looking at the pinion angle, spring perch angle, and I guess transmission angle as well, relative to everything, because it seems like everybody talks about pinion angle, but nobody says spring perch angle which is what a rear-end company, if they're building one for you, is gonna ask for. So we're gonna get into all of that, and I'll show you guys how you can check it on your car as well. So I've gone ahead here, and I got the thing up in the air about as high as I can. I got it sitting on some uh, one-inch or one-foot blocks there, so I can get underneath there, get those measurements nice and accurate. Have it sitting on all the suspension compressed as the car would be, and I've actually even gone ahead and uh, put some weights in there to simulate my 175 so that this thing is sitting exactly how it would be uh, on the street or at the staging lanes. So now we're pretty much ready to go underneath the car and uh, start putting a magnetic angle finder around and checking what we currently are set at. So I borrowed this sweet little digital angle finder. Uh, a lot of guys just have like the dial style, which works great to air. This thing does work. There we go. Uh, this thing's pretty sweet. It's got magnets on the bottom and you can just kind of click it on anywhere. It works great. I have already gone ahead and done all my measurements. I'll get into that later, but uh, let's go underneath the car and we'll start putting that thing around and show you where we're at. So there's my current differential and the best place to put this is right here on the uh, front of the input because that's going to be directly in line. That's what they're looking for. So I can put that guy right there and then oh, you can't see that on camera. But this thing is actually sitting like at point two, it says right here. And if I flip it and hold it up, it even goes zeros. Oh, zero. Where the hell are you? There it is. Hard to do with one hand. But yeah, it goes dead zero. So that's that makes everything pretty easy for calculating where I'm at. The next thing I'm going to look at is the spring perch angle. Now that's the relationship between the perches and the pinion. So this is important. This is what they're going to ask you if you're if you're ordering a rear end. So I've dropped that onto the bottom of the uh, Caltrack plate, which is of course sandwiched directly underneath the perch. So that should be very accurate as to uh, my measurement. I'm getting a 5.45 reading. So that's in relationship to her pinion. Uh, stock setting on an A-body Mopar is actually five degrees. So this is where this kind of gets kind of interesting. Okay, so here you can see I've written down some of my measurements. Uh, 545 you saw, 525 I had on the other side, and then a 510. It kind of fluctuates a little bit. You're only going to really work in half degrees anyway, so that's fine. Uh, but I've kind of drawn out the angles here to simplify it a little bit. Like, I did this for me, and I, if you do this too, this will help you. Uh, so our perch was sitting like this at 5 degrees. Our pinion was 0. So in actuality, our pinion is actually sitting up five degrees as you rotate around. If we bring this to zero, the five degrees from here would move over here, and our pinion would be up five degrees, which is stock A body. But in the car, of course, it sits nose down because those springs do not sit at zero. They sit back like that. So that's where it gets confusing because guys are always talking nose down, uh, but yet it's five degrees up, and that's the relationship there, spring perch to pinion. Now we can look at our actual pinion to trans angle. Okay, so here we got the back of the transmission and the drive shaft. And the drive shaft's actually sticking out a little bit. Um, this is something I'm gonna be correcting when we do that rear end swap. I'm gonna get a new drive shaft. And it's sticking out a little bit because if you listened to that uh, or watched that mini tub video, I said I moved the diff back three quarters of an inch and we just pulled the drive shaft back. And a lot of guys will be like, oh, you can't do that because the drive shaft will wobble. And that is true. And we test drove it, it was fine, and I've been driving on it like this for like five years. So that's that extra three quarters of an inch right there. You can see where it used to sit in the clean area. So it's been fine for me. Um, it's something I would get corrected anyway if I wasn't doing the rear end swap, but uh, I'm gonna do it anyway, so I have to go to a different drive shaft, so it'll get corrected. But let's look at this angle here. And this is the best place to do this. I'm kind of lucky that mine sticks out this far. 
because um, this guy fits right on there. But you could just pull it out and use it the same way. Can't get focused there. So we're getting um, getting 1.8 there. Oh, you can't see it on camera, but that's pretty much what I had before. 1.8, 1.6 is kind of the split on the two. So we'll look at how that relates now to our opinion. Okay, back to our super scientific textbook here. Um, so I've written down here 1.6, 1.85. And uh, that's actually at a downward angle. So you can see our relationship between our pinion here. If uh, we move our transmission to more of a straight edge, you can see that our pinion is in fact pointed down. Now this gives us a positive action as to the relationship to the transmission because when you hammer on the gas, that pinion wants to come up. So it's gonna come up to meet this angle at that 1.5. So that was, that's pretty good. A regular car, you'd actually want these all to sit in parallel. So you'd want the opposite of this sitting here. But in a drag race car, uh, depending on your suspension setup, they're gonna recommend to go to a negative offset further and further depending on what you have. So when the car was initially set up, I imagine that 1.5 was put in there to allow for that pinion to rise up and then meet the trans at that angle. So you guys confused yet? <laughs> Just wait, because it gets more. So now, because I run a Caltrack system, I jumped on their site, and they actually recommend a negative two to negative four. So that would mean if my transmission and my pinion were set in parallel, that would be zero. They would want an additional two degrees down to four degrees. Because a streetcar would be in parallel, negative two over a parallel is probably where I'm gonna send it out at. Um, negative four is pretty aggressive. So negative two to negative four is what Caltrack recommends. Um, I'm already at a negative 1.5. We learned that because the transmission is sitting at 1.6 and the pinion is at zero. So I already have a built-in 1.5 in relationship to my spring perch, which we know is at five degrees to zero at the pinion there. So if Caltrack recommends a negative two, that means I'm already at negative 1.5. So my spring perch angle should be about four degrees, which will actually give me 2.5 degrees of extra bite into the drive line. Confusing, right? <laughs> well, I'll show you guys this too. I was also concerned about the Dana 60 uh, coming into contact with the gas tank. I showed how close it was in that mini tub video, but now soon to be up on the website for sale. I have the Simpson Speed Shop clearance at 9,000 and I just installed this here jacked it up and then gave myself about inch and a half of clearance into that gas tank and didn't puncture it at all. That's uh, just how the performance parts you get from Simpson Speed Shop. So if you are looking at uh, pinion angle, spring perch angle, or I've just kind of heard any of the debates, I hope that clears it up. And actually I do hope that I am doing this correctly as I've learned all this in just the last uh, week or so, just doing research, reading threads online. And that's kind of why I thought I should make the video to show you guys what I did, what I found, and uh, maybe it makes it a little bit more clear because it's very confusing if you get into those threads online. Um, so do stay tuned. We are going to be ordering that Dana soon. And, uh, you know, weather's kind of crappy today, but it's getting nicer and nicer. We're going to be back on the street drag racing. we got dates for drag racing uh, coming up in April. We're going to be at the track. So stay tuned for that. I'm freaking stoked. See you guys later.